What's up, us? It's your boy JCI Automations back in with another video. I'm here again with Mr. Mike Sneed of Appliance Bootcamp. He's the subject matter expert here for appliance repair. He's not new to this channel. He's been on this channel several times. Hopefully, we'll get him on this channel a whole lot more. All right. But what I want to ask him in this particular video is, hold on, wait. Are you on social media because you're looking for a way to make more money in a consistent way so that you can better your personal economy or create or scale your generational wealth? Well, guess what? You're on the right channel. I want to invite you out to my Foundational Wealth Conference. There, I'm going to give you the proven strategy to make money in business, to make money in stock investing, and to make money in real estate investing. I'm bringing all of my friends together that make six and seven figures a year doing this, and I want to teach you how to do the same. Link is in the description down below if you want to take advantage of that. As an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. if I was to take you and you can't take any of your money mm -hmm. and you can't use any of your contacts in your phone mm -hmm. and I drop you off in New York City mm -hmm. with just a bag of tools, you could pack whatever could fit in your tool bag mm -hmm. and take it with you, how would you recreate your business in New York City to the level that you have it at now? New York is a different animal <laughs> because <laughs> if I'm in the city part of New York, it's not like here where it's rural, where there's a bunch of homeowners and stuff. Everybody now going to be living in high rises, and most of the time they're going to have what they call a super, which is a superintendent that actually regulates the whole building. Mm -hmm. So that's the person I got to go convince now mm -hmm. to let me go do work. So with that being that I have to go to the super, that super, he holds the gateway and all the power of people coming in there. And what they say, absolute power, absolute corrupts. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to have to go there and you probably going to have to make some concessions with that super to let you get in because there's some other company there who's actually uh, probably already doing it, the whole building and stuff. And you have to make concessions with that super to get in there to let you start doing some work. Same thing, you probably be better off maybe at that point going to maybe the restaurant district because I know at the restaurant district, a lot of those people are responsible for their own stuff. And if you ever been in New York and stuff and, and seen all the restaurants and food places they have there, I'm almost positive they got something broke there, an ice machine, <laughs> a refrigerator or something. And I'll probably go that route versus going out trying to get the super because there I got individuals uh, that I can sell to. I can go to each individual store and I can find somebody. But if I got to go to a super and he got a thousand people, a thousand homes in there that he's holding the gate for, it's almost going to be impossible for me, somebody he don't know, to break in with no money to start mm -hmm. doing that. I got to go to somebody who actually is responsible for paying for everything. And most of the time, the entrepreneur is going to be uh, that small business owner. He got a direct cost that he has to pay, and he's going to get the first person and the cheapest person at the moment that can do it. And so I use that to get my money up there and just build it back up. Now, New York is crazy, too. You just can't. It's not like North Carolina where you can actually go and just start a business. I think there you're going to have to put it in the newspaper and let it run. And that you're thinking about starting a business, you got to let it run for maybe 30 days or 60 days in the newspaper before you can even start a business. So in New York City, those places, I say New York, California is not the most business friendly places to actually operate. But I could make it work in those areas. Do you think that you could get your business to the same level you got it now in New York? Yeah, I could do it. I could All do right. it. I could do it. You know, uh, like I say, it's a different it's a different animal if you're in the city mm -hmm. because there's no parking. So there's no thing like now I pull up in my service van and park in your driveway. A lot of times they're going to have to run crews where you go up and some other person is in the van just driving around the block. Just keep mm -hmm. circling the block. And if you need something, you come down and he, he come pull up and you get it out the truck and he keep driving. Because sometimes I've talked to some of the uh, service companies that run in New York. They might have, you know, $1,500, $2,000 parking tickets at the end of the month oh. that they have to actually pay a company to go negotiate their parking tickets. You know, so everything changes. Even here, you know, we just worry about putting our, our wraps and our lettering on the sides of our van. Mm -hmm. But if you go to New York... The top of the van has just as much emphasis as the sides because everybody up so high, mm. they looking down. So it's just you can do it. You just have to change up a little bit. But yeah, you can do it. Would, would your marketing change? Because we're in the Carolinas. Mm. I ain't gonna lie. When I go to New York, it seems like the people are mean. Maybe they just different. <laughs> uh -huh. So if you watching this uh -huh. and you from New York, mm. I'm not saying you mean. Maybe it's just different. <laughs> but compared to how people are in North mm. Carolina, it seems like the people are mean. So and I asked that because mm. you said instead of just wrapping the sides, you wrap the top mm. so would you change your marketing to resonate with those people yeah you would 
definitely have to, I would definitely have to change the marketing because the stuff that, that we're here to make us go like me, if I'm marketing here in North Carolina to the people I want, they're going to want to hear dependable, customer care. They want to hear stuff like that. And New York is fast paced. They want to hear fast, same day, you know, <laughs> uh, within 24 hours and all that type of stuff. Because everything just fast paced, got to move and it never stops. Here, it's a lot slower and they're not so much about the fitness of it. They're more so concerned about the quality of it. Mm-hmm. So in New York, hey, well, I need to get it here, get it done, get it done. Even if you go there and order food, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, you know, mm-hmm. versus here. No, I can, I can sit down and I can look at the menu a second. Ain't nobody going to be barking at me versus <laughs> uh, I, I show enough the person behind the counter or not. But in New York, they tell you to get out the way, let somebody else go. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, so there you have it, you guys. So if we were to take Mike and the only thing that he could take with him, no money, no contacts, just whatever mm-hmm. tools he could fit in his tool bag, he would go there. He would target the commercial side of the house, right? Mm-hmm. The restaurant mm-hmm. district instead of the residential side, since that's going to probably be big on either relationships or you got some money to throw at him to get your foot in the door. All right. And scale his business up that mm-hmm. way. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. With the skill trade, with the appliance repair and the skill trade, mm-hmm. it will work anywhere. Okay. Um, I had a guy that used to work for me. You might have met him, Oliver, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver, he, he came from, wow. Well, Argentina? Uh, not Argentina. The other place. Good Lord. I can't think now. But anyway, <laughs> he came from a, uh, uh, from a communist country, socialist country. Mm-hmm. And uh, he used to actually, every day, he would uh, have to sneak over into Cuba <laughs> and uh, dead broke and fix cell phones. And then uh, after he fixed the cell phones, he would have to take the cell phones and sell them on the black market and make money. Then he'd take the money and go buy beans, dry beans and rice to actually have that flown back to his communist country. And that's how he fed his family. So you, even in a communist country and stuff, you could actually survive if you got skilled trades. Mm -hmm. All right. So there you have it, you guys. If you want to continue to learn from Mike, whether it's the ice cream parlor business, the appliance repair business, he also has some other special businesses that make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to this channel and post notifications on so you can see those other videos as well. All right. Um, What's the best way to reach you if they want to learn how to be Uh, an entrepreneur? You can follow me at appliancebootcamp.com or Mm -hmm. follow us on YouTube at Appliance Bootcamp. All right. And I'll put that link down in the description below for your convenience. Till next time, so much. Let's stay hustling. JT Automation. I'm gone.